All right, guys, we're back. It's another year. So in today's episode, I wanted to cover my tech travel bag that I've used in over 100 flights last year. I think I was home for a total of 52 days, and this year's not looking good either. I mean, I think it's we're heading into February now, and I've only been, I haven't been home yet, actually. No, I haven't been home. So as you guys can see, we have a new bag this year, and it's the Peak Design, nope, not anymore. Peak Design V1 and V2 were my favorite bags over the past couple years that I've showed you guys. Those are gone. And now I have the Nomadic Everyday Travel Bag. I believe this is the 20 liter. It also comes in a 30 liter, if I'm not mistaken. But what I love about this bag is anything you could possibly ever need to carry with you, this bag has you covered for. It also expands. So if you do want to go ahead and pack maybe three days worth of clothes in here, you can do that. Unless you're going to Alaska, because then you would need a lot more clothes. But if you are planning on going to warmer climates or traveling in the summer, this bag is perfect for putting a few days worth of clothes in, especially when you land in Charles de Gaulle, like I do in Paris, and they always lose my luggage. Now coming to this side of the travel bag, I have the Peak Design camera clip here, which has been a lifesaver for me. If you guys are always traveling abroad, you're taking pictures, you're shooting videos, it's such a hassle to go into your camera bag, take your camera out, switch lenses, whatever the case may be, this has saved me so much time. You can literally just clip your camera into this and it has a safety locking mechanism to where it won't fall off. And I think it holds up to like 200 pounds or something crazy like that. So I highly recommend this clip from Peak Design along with their plate. It works really well and I promise you won't be disappointed. Now say I arrive at my destination and I don't need my laptop and I just wanna carry around my laptop or my iPad, but I do need some sort of protection. I can't recommend these cases from Confiable enough. There's three separate cases that we'll talk about here real quick. They're absolutely amazing. They're vegan leather, they're lightweight, waterproof, and they're very minimal. Best of all, they have a great price. Now, the first one up is the laptop case. This one does not have a zipper. It's a slim, lightweight, minimal case that has a soft inside that does protect your MacBook. It's also 100% flat. So you can go ahead and use this as a bottom pad for your MacBook if you're in a scenario where you don't have a desk and you do need to set your laptop down somewhere. The other two cases are a laptop and iPad case. Now I use these with my iPad mini, my iPad Pro, and my M2 Max MacBook Pro now. Both of these though have a zipper plus padding. So foam internal padding, protection from slight shocks and bumps, along with a zipper, which makes these great for waterproof scenarios to where it might be raining outside or you spill a drink on your laptop or if there's a ton of dust. These I can't recommend enough from Confiable and these are the ones that I use when I'm on vacation or traveling and I don't really wanna carry around my backpack but just need something to protect my iPad and my MacBooks. Now we'll also have a coupon code link down below for you guys if you do wanna go ahead and pick these up from Confiable, whether you need a case for your iPad or your MacBook Pro. These work really well, not just for those, but other laptops out in the market. So make sure you guys check that out once this video is over. I will leave that coupon code and link down below in the description for you. Now I think before we go ahead and get into the actual bag, we should check what's in my pockets because that's just as, if not more important. So we have, again, dual wielding, the S22 Ultra, which the S23 Ultra should be coming out here in the next week, maybe two weeks. Make sure you guys are subscribed if you wanna see that video. And the iPhone 14 Pro. Now I've had the iPhone 14 Pro for a few months now, obviously since launch. The one thing that I absolutely cannot stand about this phone is it literally catches on fire. Like I'm, I'm not exaggerating. As soon as I open up Lightroom and the phone is charging or if I'm on FaceTime, the screen dims to 50%, I can't see it, especially when I'm out in bright sunlight. And the phone just gets super hot. And then the battery drains so fast. I thought the battery life would get better this time around. And if you watched some of the videos on YouTube, like from Mr. Who's the Boss, it does show that the battery life has improved a little bit. But for my everyday world case use scenario, the battery drains way too fast and this phone gets super hot as soon as I open up an app like Lightroom or if I'm charging my phone and on FaceTime at the same time. So those are the two phones that I'm using currently. Now in this pocket over here, we have my Ridge wallet. It has the RFID security, so you guys won't have to worry about your credit card information getting stolen. In this, I have all of my basic everyday travel credit cards and cards that I use for shopping and everything across the board. So first one up is the American Express Platinum card. I absolutely love this one. It does have a high fee, but it does come with a ton of perks that make so much sense. It gives you Avis Preferred, Hertz Gold, and if you use someone like Enterprise, they even match that. So if you're traveling abroad and you need to rent a car, there's so many perks, along with being able to use this as well in the Delta Lounge, I believe, which we'll cover here in a second. 
But an American Express Platinum card, no foreign exchange fees, you can use it anywhere in the world. And it obviously has no preset spending limit based on your spending patterns. Now, one thing I also love about American Express is when you do have the Platinum card, you have a dedicated rep. So you can go ahead, pretty much call American Express and you get directed right to a rep instead of having to wait on the regular customer service line. Another thing is if you lose this card, say you're somewhere in Paris, France, right? And you're at a hotel, your credit card gets stolen. You can literally call American Express and they will ship one to your hotel the very next day. Very convenient. Next up, we have my global entry card. Now I love this because it has TSA and Sentry included into this. So what this pretty much does is say you're traveling anywhere, especially domestic here in the United States, you do not have to go ahead, take your shoes off, take your belt off. You literally go ahead and pretty much breeze right through security, especially when there's long lines and you're about to miss your flight. It's super useful using global entry. Now this is pretty much TSA on steroids, I'd say. When you're coming into the country from overseas, you don't have to go ahead and wait in the line either when it comes to customs. By the way, if you guys do have your American Express Platinum card, it does go ahead and pay for the TSA and the Global Entry membership. I think for like five years or something like that, because that's when you have to renew it. It's every four or five years that you renew it. But American Express, one of the perks with the Platinum card is it does pay for TSA for you guys. And it also pays for clear, I believe, for the first year or two. So make sure you guys take full advantage of that and see what you can use this card for. And if it makes sense for you to go ahead and spend the $700 annual fee with this. Next up, we have my Chase Sapphire card. Now I love using this one because for hotels and travel where you can't use your American Express card, say like Macedonia or Serbia, a lot of places don't even know what American Express is. Some of them do not want to pay the fees. And even some places here in Miami don't take American Express though, which is kind of crazy to me. But having a backup Visa card is always very useful in places and scenarios to where you can't use your American Express card. So you always want to have a Visa or MasterCard backup. And then last up, we have my American Express Delta Sky Miles Business Rewards card. Now this one is another one that has so many perks, but it does not give you as many points as the American Express Platinum does. So that's kind of how they like sucker you in. But this one also is meant for people that fly Delta. Now for me, I do fly Delta a lot. Obviously I'm a medallion member. So with this particular card, say you were diamond medallion, which is the top tier, and someone else was diamond medallion, and you go ahead and you buy a basic ticket. It should upgrade you to first class, which would save you a lot of money in the long run. But at the same time, say you have diamond medallion status and someone else does, if you have this card and they don't, you have priority over them and actually getting that first class upgrade instead of just say Delta Comfort Plus. But if you are someone who's just going ahead and using your American Express and you fly with Delta, I would recommend you guys actually pick up the Platinum card over this one because the Platinum card gives you five points if you book directly with that airline and it also gives you five points directly if you book with the hotel. Now you can still be a medallion member obviously without having the Delta Sky Miles card. And at the end of the year when I tally it up, it makes so much more sense to use the Platinum card and transfer all the miles that I earn over to my Delta account instead of using the Sky Miles Reserve card here. It just makes so much more sense and you can actually save the 550 bucks and just go with the Platinum. Now, as you guys can see in this first compartment, I have all of my essentials that I go ahead and I grab rather quickly. So I have my glorious Model O Wireless. This has been my favorite mouse for the past, I don't know how many years. Since it launched, you guys remember, we reviewed this one and the wired version and I absolutely love this mouse. I wish the battery life was a little bit better on it, but I honestly, I can't tell you guys how much I love this one. The Logitech MX Master 3 is also another fabulous mouse. I just like this one. It looks a lot better in my opinion. What do we got over here? We have the Sony card reader for the a7 IV, a7S III, and the A1. Anything that uses the tough Sony CF Express Type A cards and B cards, this one reads very well. And you actually need this to read Sony's tough cards unless you get the regular UHS-2. In this pocket, we have Sony's MP batteries for my cameras for when I'm traveling. And below that, we also have a USB Type-C charger from RAF Power to go ahead and charge those batteries. Over in this pocket, we have this Gallium Nitride 120 watt charger from Anchor that you guys saw me review a couple of months ago. This thing has been absolutely fabulous. If you're carrying around a laptop, an iPad, your phones, whatever the case may be, and it has three ports on the back, 
one for your laptop, one for your iPhone, and then you also have a USB type A port. But the other ones are USB type C. This thing charges super fast and it doesn't get that hot and it's very, very small and compact. I absolutely love this thing and I can't recommend it enough. I will make sure to leave that video link down below for you guys as well. As well as everything that you guys see in today's episode, we'll have a link down below in the description. Oh boy, here we go. We still have, this is by far my favorite external SSD that I've ever bought. When I initially bought this, it was very, very expensive. It still is expensive even until this day. This is the Samsung SSD X5 Thunderbolt, which at the time was one of the only Thunderbolt external SSDs that supported Thunderbolt technology with your MacBooks. Transfer speeds on this are absolutely insane. Even in today's standards, I think it's like 3,000 up, 3,000 down. This thing is absolutely insane. I highly recommend it. And it has withstood the test of time for me. I absolutely love this. And this is the only external SSD that I ever carry with me. Now, along with the pockets here in the front, you also have two pockets on the inside here. One thing that's not in my bag right now that's actually in my car is the Peak Design Carbon Fiber Travel Tripod. That thing is absolutely insane. It was a bit more expensive and I was kind of on the fence about buying it. But honestly, that has also withstood the test of time and it's the best tripod that I've ever owned. Very compact, lightweight, and it fits perfectly in one of these side pockets on the bag. In this top pocket, it is also RFID safe. So if you don't have the Ridge Wallet, you can go ahead and use that. So let's see what we have in here. Okay, we have my M1 Max charger and a lightning charger for my iPhone. We have my Beats Fit Pro, which are one of my favorite earbuds that I've ever owned. We did a full review on these and we also stacked them up against the newest set of AirPod Pros. If you guys wanna see that video to where I compared both of them, I will make sure to leave that link down below for you guys as well. Couple of pens and then we also have this case here. Now this particular case is from a company called JJC. It pretty much holds all of your SD cards. Now I have three of them around here somewhere, but this one has a nice soft like foam to where it protects the SD cards. It doesn't exactly fit the Sony CF Express Type A smaller cards very well. It does hold them obviously, but as soon as you open it, just make sure you're careful because they won't fall out. All right, so that does it for the bottom compartment here. Now at the top, we have an easy access compartment that's also RFID safe, I believe. And it also is where my AirPod second gen headphones are. So these are the ones we just talked about. Then we also have some sustained eye drops. You guys know as a tech YouTuber and creator, I'm always staring at my screen or my phone. So eye drops are very useful, especially in longer sessions. So your eyes don't get tired. Now we also have the MagSafe Duo charger. I think that's what it's called. It's where you can charge your watch and your iPhone or AirPods at the same time. Now, obviously with the newer AirPods, you can go ahead and use your watch to charge them. Now I'm rocking the Apple Ultra for my watch. You guys saw the review on that. If you haven't, I'll also link that down below for you guys. That's been my watch of choice. And I absolutely love the battery life on this thing. As a tech enthusiast and someone who loves exercising, this has been the best watch. But this charger is super convenient. I think it's 129 bucks, so it is a bit more expensive, but how easy it is to use and how small and compact this thing is, is what makes it special for me. All right, let's go ahead and open the larger part of the bag. This is the part where the clothing actually goes and I have some other accessories here. We have some noise plugs in here. We also have my favorite microphone to use on the go. This is the Sony ECM B1M. It lets you filter out noise, analog and digital converter. It. it does work through the hot shoe mount on my Sony cameras. Now for this particular video, I'm shooting on the Sony a7 IV. I found that to be the perfect middle ground camera for me in between the A1 and the a7S III. I have my a7S III at home, but since I am traveling, I need a bit more in terms of megapixels when I am shooting photos. So that's why I use this camera and it's been absolutely amazing. My favorite two lenses to use, which we'll cover here in a second for that, on the Sony camera, we have the 24 millimeter F 1.4 G master lens. That's my favorite kind of middle ground camera lens. It's perfect for videos. It's perfect for shooting photos. And it does obviously have a 1.4 aperture. So it does work a lot better in those lower light scenarios. As you guys can see, this is where you can go ahead and put your clothing in this. And it does expand so we can, you know, put some underwear in there, a couple of white beaters, a couple of things that you might need just in case your luggage gets lost, like I mentioned before. It works really well and it has separate pockets to where you can go ahead and separate things. All right, so we close that part up. Now this is something Peter McKinnon recommended a few years ago to me. It's a low pro camera bag. Now the one thing I don't like about 
this Nomadic Everyday Travel Bag is it doesn't really have a compartment for your actual camera. We have a ton of stuff. It has room for your cameras, for your lenses. I have an extra backup charger here from RAV Power. I believe this one is an actual, this is a 90 watt two port wall charger, USB-C power delivery. So this is a backup if I'm already using my Anchor one. In here, we also have a 67 millimeter Tiffin ND filter. This works perfect with the 20 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and even 35 millimeter F1.4 G Master lenses. But recently I picked up the Sony 14 millimeter F1.8 G Master lens. And with this one, it has a much wider angle lens, which is perfect for vlogging. I absolutely love this lens. This is by far my favorite lens, along with the 24 millimeter F1.4 that I'm using to film this video with. I feel like those are the perfect two lenses to use with you, especially when you're traveling. You have a perfect camera for shooting photos and video, and then you also have the perfect lens for vlogging. Now, getting into the moment you guys have been waiting for, I've been back and forth between my iPad mini, latest gen, and the iPad Pro. This is by far my favorite iPad. I just wish we had that 120 hertz refresh rate. And then obviously it also has a slot for your Apple second gen pencil, which I also have and is charging over there somewhere. For my laptop, you guys probably already know what it is. It's the M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro, fully specced out aside from storage which you guys have seen so many videos on here in the past few years. However, today's a different day. We have the new M2 Max MacBook Pro. Fully spec'd out, what do we have on this one? 96 gigs of RAM, four terabytes of storage. So not fully spec'd out with the storage. I believe it does go up to eight terabytes, but I learned my lesson picking up the one terabyte version last time. We have a 12 core CPU and 38 core GPU. So fully spec'd out, Thunderbolt 4 HDMI port, Still have the slot for the SD card reader. Full review on this guy will be here soon. So make sure you guys are subscribed if you wanna see that. I do also wanna mention that the brand is by far my favorite skin to use on my laptop. This one is the Camel. It looks really good and it, I absolutely love this thing. And then we also have my microphone over here in my setup that I <laughs> go ahead and travel the world with. This is the Sennheiser MK e600 so i have the rode ntg5 for the longest time in the studio it's back home i love this thing because all it takes is one cable and you can power this with a double a battery so you have one cable running to the camera and that's pretty much it and then i also have this clamp here dinkum systems it's a clamp to where you can go ahead it has the thread at the top and you can pretty much connect anything to it even your camera so it clamps to pretty much anything here and as you guys can see we have a setup on the go here in this unit here in Miami Beach, Florida. Either way, that's been it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below in the comment section if I missed anything in this particular tech travel setup. Let me know down below where you'll also find links to everything that we covered in today's episode. If you want to see more, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next episode. Peace.